Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Memoirs of an Empress, A Silver Lining. Good morning, it is Sunday, God has blessed us to be here today, and today we are going to um, discuss balance and accepting that we will never be uh, popular, so to speak, in the world. Uh, we're going to touch on some very informative scriptures. So if you've been to my channel before, welcome back. And if you're here for the first time, welcome, be encouraged. I'm going to say a quick prayer and then I'm going to dive right into these scriptures, guys, because I have a few to read and expound on. Um, this talk is for, of course, everyone who views it, everyone who um, wants to get to know the beginner things, beginner things of the Bible. But most of all, this scripture is for those people that are on the narrow road and they get so much hate and so much backlash. This talk is to give them, you all, uh, you believers, encouragement and a reminder that God is with us um, and stay the course. So I'm going to pray in Jesus name, as I always do before I read the scriptures. Um, and I'm going to dive right into this talk. Dear is Heavenly Father, we thank you for life today. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you provided your word. We thank you so much that you provide the sun and the rain and everything that we need to survive. I want to give you glory and honor today and just let you know that I love you. My exclusive devotion goes to you. Please help me to deliver this talk and please allow me to expound with clarity. Please bless us from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet and keep us safe. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, so put on my readers and get right into it. Okay, so the first scripture, okay, so the first thing I want to talk about today, and it's kind of a combination, so I'm going to jump from one topic to another, but I'm going to go over this topic when I say balance. So when you start studying the word of God, you know, your life changes. Your life is going to change because you're going to apply the word. And it's only natural that um, you progress and you do so, you know. So without you even really, you know, knowing, you will make some changes in life. And you will progress because the word of God is just that powerful. And, you know, you'll be on an upward. Um, <clears throat> once you become um, a follower of Christ. You know, many will say, oh, they will test you, so to speak. You know, you'll see people and they'll do certain things or say certain things because they want to see your reaction. They want to see if you truly follow Christ or how, how good are you. And it's so sad because the hardest thing in this world to do is to be a Christian. I'll say it again. The hardest thing in this world to do is to be a Christian. So if you are on that narrow road, not only do I admire you, but I applaud you because it's not easy. It's one of the, it's a wrestle. It's a wrestle every day. Every day we have to beat our flesh. Every day we have to um, come against people who hate us. And we have to watch how we react because we don't want to react like them because we are the ones that are following Christ. And so our actions have to represent that. See, another person, they can do whatever they want to do, but we have to always make sure that we are representing Christ in the right way. And it is a wrestle. It's not always easy because 
we have that old personality we put away and sometimes that old personality wants to jump back in and say I'm right here let's let, let me get right with you for a minute let me recall you to who I was okay give me five minutes in a room with you you know what I'm saying but um you know we are trying to live that balanced life right and so it's a wrestle right but everything the victory is coming right and so we know what we're in it for our reward is eternal life our reward our crowns at the end of this at the end of this is going to be something that is so huge so um, lots of people like to say like you know oh you know Christians can't do anything but now that's not the case because um, you know Jesus he made wine do you remember at a wedding the wine uh, ran out and he made the wine so God didn't say it was anything wrong with drinking he said drunkardness was a sin. And I'm not just talking about <clears throat> drinking when I speak about this topic, but I'm talking about living a balanced life. See, some people feel like if you're a Christian and you curse, it's like, oh, she cursed. You know, sometimes you will. You will always miss the mark of perfection. You're not Jesus. You know, um, you're just following behind his blueprint and the best of your ability. You will never make the perfection mark, okay? <clears throat> Adam and Eve erased that and Christ came to fulfill the law. So, um, yes, Christians do go out. Yes, Christians do listen to music. Just not all types of music. Me, I erased... Um, certain ratchet music that was like given off very bad um uh very bad uh things you know talking about uh you know i took your man and you know um just all types of things that are not good i took that from my music log my playlist but i do listen to r and B. I i do listen to certain rap i do listen to um I listen to secular music. Now, you know, some people might say, oh, that's terrible. You know, she's a Christian and she listens to secular music. But, you know, fortunately, they are not the judge of me. God is. So, it's about living a balanced life. Balance. Balance in all things. So, I am going to take you to the scripture where Jesus made the wine. Okay? Let's go to John 2. And I will read. I believe verse 11 it might be a different verse once I get there because sometimes I find the need to read a verse to you that I didn't see before but let's just see what's gonna happen so 2 verse 11 okay see it's not 11 is 2 verse I'll just start from 2, 1. John 2, verse 1. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does that have to do with me? What, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not come yet, yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water and they filled them up with to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the water that had now become wine and did not know where it came from. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, 
the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This is the first of his signs. Jesus did at Cana in Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. So let me just give you a recap of what happened. Okay, um, usually they would serve the best wine first because, you know, when people drink wine, they're like, ooh, mm, this is some good wine. And then after they're drunk, they don't even know anymore. They're just drinking. So when the wine ran out, the master of the feast was given this new wine that Jesus had made. Let me repeat that. Jesus had made. And when he tasted it, he said, wait a minute. We usually serve the, 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 the poor wine now. This is like great wine. And you know if Jesus made it, it was the best, honey. The best. And I like me a glass of apple Moscato with some strawberries and cream. So I know Jesus' wine was absolutely tasty but anyway um this was the first sign see jesus wasn't at the party like a party pooper he did say why are you telling me the wine ran out my hour hasn't come yet <laughs> and that was like you know he knew what he came into the world to do but y'all need wine okay i'm gonna give y'all some wine and you know this scripture just talks about balance you know, you don't have to be an overly righteous person. Mm, can't drink wine. Mm, uh, can't, can't, can't dance. Mm, can't, uh, can't listen to any music. Mm, you know, ooh, you know, you can't uh, think that this type of lifestyle is going to be something that um, you'll be able to uh, enjoy. Jesus came to show us how to have an abundant life. So he made the wine and it was good. Now, let's go to uh, you people who are believers um, who get that backlash. I get it all the time. People look at me and they say, oh, I don't like her. They don't even know me. You don't even know me and you just don't like me. But it's not that you don't like me. It's that you don't like the God in me. You don't like the light in me. See, darkness does not comprehend light. Now let's go to that scripture. John 15 verse 18. And let's read that. Okay, and that reads, if the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. Beca but because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will always they will also keep yours. Okay? But all these things they will do to you on account of my name because they do not know him who sent me. Let's start right there. So the world is fond of their own, right? Anybody in the world, you're doing what the world says. I mean, if this world says Skittles is the new doodle, let's eat them. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, girl, yeah. You know, but the minute you have a mind of your own and you're following Christ, you know, all of a sudden you're an outcast. Get ready. Just accept it, okay? Accept it. Me, I'm going to tell you. 
I don't care about what somebody's selling. I don't care about name brand, okay? Um, I have nine children, so there's been times I have wore tugs. Yes, Uggs that are not Uggs, but they look like Uggs, but they weren't as comfortable. I call them tugs. And thank God they made a name called Bear Paws. I have been in Bear Paws. Yes, I have had Uggs too. But what I mean, what I mean by that is, let me tell you something. I do not follow the Joneses. I have a Samsung. I do not have an iPhone. I'm very good with whatever I have because I know one thing. God gives me all that I need in this world. There's a scripture that says, my people will never go hungry and they will never beg. And that I know because the word cannot tell a lie. So I will tell you that um, sometimes I eat steak and sometimes I eat chicken and sometimes I eat hot dogs and sometimes I eat tuna fish, but I always eat. And I also tell you that I keep myself clean. I smell amazing. I'm beautiful. And I don't care if I put on a $3 tank top or I put on some $5 shoes in which I happen. No, I don't have on $5 shoes now. I have on some shoes from DSW. They're cute. But I do have some $5 flip-flops that I wear. They are comfortable and I love them. I don't follow the Joneses, right? Because um, it's just never been my style. Um, I do have times where, hey, I have a lot of money. But it doesn't matter what I have in my pocket. If I see something, I like it and it's two cent. Or I see something I like and it's 200 I'm going to purchase it if I like it. That's just always been me. So um, following the crowd... No, um, we have to stay on the narrow road, guys. The world is fond of their own. That's why when I put up a vlog and it gets a like, yes, I said it, a like, um, I'm like, I don't care. I put it up because I liked it, and that's all that matters. And it, it glorified God, because if it's anything that I do, it's always going to glorify God. And if I ever did something that did not glorify God, believe me, I went to God and asked for repentance because that's just who I am. But now, um, I may put up a picture on Facebook or my gram and I know it's a dope picture and I don't get any likes. I could care less. To me, that's the best picture. It's epic. That's why nobody liked it. Nobody liked it because it was too bright. It, it blinded you. Moving on. Okay. We're going to go now. This made my heart I don't want to cry, but this touched my heart so much because when Jesus was going his way to the back to the heavens, he was done here with the earth. <laughs> they had just, see, people think that Jesus was killed. Jesus was not killed. Jesus laid his life down. There's a difference. At any time, Jesus could have called legions of angels to come and take those people who were torturing him and just annihilate them. But Jesus knew, he, you know, he was 100% man and he was 100% God. He wasn't 50% and 50%. He was 100%. He was the Messiah. And so he laid down his life for us. But now he said something because he loved the believers. He loves us so much. And he knew he was going back to the heavens. He was done here with the earth. And he said a prayer. And when I read it, it it's... It, it touches me and the prayer is found let's see what he said John 17 verse Sorry guys, it takes me a minute. Um, 17 verse, what did I say? I said John 17 verse 15. Okay, and that reads, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they may also be sanctified in truth. So, 
So, you know, um, he prayed for us because he knew that they, the world would hate us. He knew that we would get persecuted. Persecution comes in many forms. And I say to myself, wow, people who are honestly persecuting believers, it's just like, it's funny because if they would leave us alone, then we would have no power. But because they constantly try to make, you know, a problem for us, we already know that we're on the right road. You know, um, but he he prayed for us because he loves us so. He prayed for us, and that touches my heart. Um, so, guys, there's another scripture I wanted to read. Um, I don't really know which one it is, and I'm pressed for time right now. So it just said that, um, I'll tell you what it said, and it said to follow Jesus meant you pick up your torch at stake. So lots of people think to follow Jesus or a Christian's walk is easy. It's one of the hardest things to do, as I said to you when I opened this talk. It is a wrestle. And I'm not talking about the people that go to church on Sunday and they shouting and hollering and whooping and all of this. And then they come back home and they forget and they're not living. Uh, to follow Jesus is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It's something we do every day. Are we perfect? No. Will we miss the mark of perfection? Yes. But can we make it? Absolutely. I'm going to end the study here. Tomorrow will be a huge testimony. I'm going to talk to you about how adultery affected my life, how Satan came for my family, and how today I am still winning in Christ. I don't know how emotional it will be for me tomorrow. I just want to cover everything because the next couple of days will be big, big, big time testimonies for me. This week is a very huge week for me coming up. It's a very huge week. Um, I get baptized. Um, I get a victory that I've been waiting for for over a year. And um, the Lord showed me that. He gave me that revelation. And um, guys, I just want to say thank you for the ones who have watched this course, this beginner's Bible course. I will never do another beginner's Bible course. I will never revisit uh, to teach you the Bible again because now I have to go into my lifestyle ministry. And um, this will be the only Bible course that I will ever do on my memoirs of an Empress channel. Um, my next vlogs will be encouraging. They will be inspiring. They will be uh, for women, dedicated to women and mothers. But this is the only time. This is the only course. This was such a course that I have been kept to do at an appointed time. Like I told you, I have done many vlogs in the past trying to get this course just right. I feel maybe my last one was better, but I deleted them. I had to do them over. It took great courage for me to bring you this. Um, I am an eloquent speaker. I have taken, my degree is in public speaking, communication. So um, I, do, I do know that I have a knack for speaking. However, um, I tell you all the time, my dream was to be in radio, but God had me here on this platform. What an honor, what a privilege it is to, to be on assignment for the most high. Um, I want to say I love you. I want to wish you guys a lot of love in life, and I want to tell you to read the word of God and study it to show yourselves approved. Love and light to you. Do tune in tomorrow for my testimony. It will be surviving Satan's attack and overcoming adultery. You can do it. If anyone has ever battled that, tomorrow's talk is just for you. Love and light. Enjoy.